Hello everyone to this week's webinar where we will talk about how to negotiate around the globe. We will start this webinar in approximately 4 minutes, so in the meantime feel free to grab a cup of water or a cup of coffee before we get started. For those who are just joining, welcome to this week's webinar where we will talk about how to negotiate around the globe. We will start this webinar in approximately 3.5 minutes. Uh, let's just give some time for everybody to join. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to ask us in the comment section here on LinkedIn. It would also be very interesting to understand where you are joining from, so feel free to let us know here in the comment section below the country that you are uh, watching us. For those who are just joining, welcome to this week's webinar. We will start this webinar in approximately 3 minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. And also feel free to let us know which country are you joining from. Today we will talk about how to negotiate around the globe, so if you have any questions feel free to let us know uh, in the question uh, box below. Um, we will start this webinar in approximately 2 minutes, so feel free to let us know in the comment section which country you are joining from. I still see more people uh, joining this webinar. Welcome everybody. Today we will talk about how to negotiate around the globe and we will start the webinar in approximately one and a half minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comment section. Our team will be there to answer them. In the meantime, feel free uh, to let us know which country you are joining from. It's always interesting to understand uh, the countries where people are joining from, especially because we see people from all over the world. So feel free to let us know in the comment section which country you are joining from. We will start this webinar in approximately one minute. For those who are still joining, welcome to this week's webinar where we will talk about how to negotiate around the globe. If you still have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. We would also like to ask you which country you are joining from. It's always interesting to find out uh, the country where people are watching us. So please let us know in the comment section below. And welcome again. We will start this webinar in approximately 20 seconds. So if you need to grab a cup of water or a cup of coffee, feel free to do it in the meantime. All right, so let's get started with the webinar in approximately 10 seconds. So good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to today's webinar on how to negotiate around the globe. My name is Philippe and in the next 15 to 20 minutes we will dive into the essentials of negotiating around the globe. From cultural insights to practical tips, get ready to master international negotiation. Today's agenda takes us on a global negotiation tour, exploring diverse styles across the East and West. Starting in the East, we will unpack how negotiations play out in China and Japan and covering the unique strategies that drive success. Shifting to the West, we will explore the directness of American negotiations, the finesse in French approaches, the resilience of Russian negotiations and the intricate negotiation in Indian culture. In this brief exploration, 
we will unlock the essentials for effective cross-cultural negotiations. Get ready for a quick tour through the diverse negotiation landscapes of our interconnected world. Okay, so there are these five main negotiation styles that people are supposed to follow. But here's the thing, other things also affect negotiations. One big factor is culture. When people from different cultures negotiate, any problems that come up are usually blamed on cultural differences. While not all these issues are because of culture, some definitely are. Going to the eastern side, let's delve into two intriguing negotiation styles, Japanese and Chinese. We will discuss the strategies that define and shape these negotiations. Negotiations in eastern cultures often prioritize relationships, shaping their negotiation goals around this perspective. People from these cultures typically have interdependent or collectivist self-concepts. This means that they define themselves by their relationships, viewing themselves in the context of social groups. They see themselves as agents constrained by social obligations to maintain harmony and preserve faith within these groups. In the case of the Japanese and Chinese, they prefer negotiating in larger teams, aiming for consensus decision-making. Working with such a team, it might not be immediately clear who the leader is or who holds the authority to commit on their behalf. Negotiating within this consensus-oriented approach often takes more time. Japanese negotiators tend to avoid making commands and threats, reflecting a concern for relationship management which differs from negotiating styles in several Western cultures. Navigating negotiations in China requires a clear understanding of their unique approach. While some Chinese business people and officials may be well-versed in international dealings, many still prefer things to be done their way initially. It's wise to let them set the pace until you figure out the most effective way to interact. Due to China's historical periods of isolation and foreign intrusions, there used to be a bias against foreigners. While this is changing in business centers, it's crucial to show respect for China's rich history and significance. While it's acceptable to call China a developing country, avoid referring to it as a third world country, considering its historical importance and economic dominance over the centuries. Building strong relationships is important in Chinese business culture, especially through business meals and entertainment events. Declining participation in these activities may signal a lack of serious interest in doing business. Although business is not typically discussed during such events, there can be exceptions. In Chinese negotiations, the primary approach involves disruptive and contingency bargaining. While the buyer may hold a superior position, both sides share their responsibility to reach an agreement. Chinese negotiators focus on long-term commitments and benefits, even though their style may appear highly competitive. Despite occasional aggressive bargaining, they value long-term relationships and are willing to compromise for the sake of the overall connection. It's essential to stay calm, friendly, patient and persistent during negotiations. Avoid taking anything personally. Maintaining a consistency in objectives, messages and involved parties is crucial. Expect negotiations to be slow and protracted, with an emphasis on relationship building, information gathering, bargaining and decision making. Be prepared for negotiators attempting to wear you down to secure concessions. Many Japanese business people are experienced in interacting with other cultures. However, this does not mean that they are open-minded. Transitioning into the negotiation aspect when negotiating business in Japan People expect that you understand and follow the Japanese way of doing things. After all, this country, with its history as an isolated island nation, is culturally very homogeneous and commonality of customs is considered highly desirable. To the Japanese, negotiating is usually a joint problem-solving process. Transitioning into the dynamics of negotiation, the buyer clearly has a dominant role, as the seller carries a stronger burden to support that buyer than in most other societies. Vendors are expected to do whatever it takes to satisfy their customers' needs and salespeople may receive harsh treatment from unhappy clients. In extreme cases, Japanese customers may demand to receive details of their vendors' cost structure and expect to receive prices at some margin above that. 
At the same time, both sides are expected to take care of each other. Transitioning into the collaborative aspect, the buyer will ensure that the seller makes a profit in the deal, though what they may consider acceptable is often lower than in many other countries. Ultimately, both sides are partners in a mutual dependency bound by their relationship. Both are expected to make a long-term commitment to their business engagement and will mostly focus on its long-term benefits. Sellers may be expected to accept short-term losses for long-term gains. A Japanese buyer is interested in what the vendor will do to reduce costs in the future, expecting that most of the savings are passed on so that both buyer and seller can enjoy more business by reducing the cost of their product or service. Transitioning into negotiation styles, the primary negotiation style is cooperative and people may be open to compromise if viewed as helpful in order to move the negotiation forward. It is important to be flexible and creative to get a deal that both sides are pleased to have. Should a dispute arise at any stage of a negotiation, resolving it may require the help of an external mediator, ideally the party who initially introduced you. Expect negotiations to be slow and protracted, with immense attention paid to details to throughout the stages. Relationship building, information gathering, bargaining and decision making all take considerable time. Transitioning into the formality of negotiation, the Japanese negotiation style is very formal and tolerates only a restricted set of negotiation tactics. Moving on to the discussion of Western cultures. People from these cultures tend to have independent, also called individualistic, self construals this concept refers to the way individuals identify themselves, the mutual relationships they have and how they see themselves in relation to others. Transitioning from the concept, individuals with independent self-construals understand themselves as independent or detached from the social groups to which they belong. They view themselves as agent-free to focus on personal goals to self-actualize rather than on social obligations. Moving on to the impact of this cultural trait on negotiations, for example, it has been proven that US negotiators make more extreme offers, indicating that they were focused on claiming and more self-enhancing statements, indicating a focus on the self. In contrast, collectivist Greek negotiators focus more on both parties. Then, now into team dynamics. Many Americans tend to follow the approach of a negotiating team with a supreme leader who has complete authority to decide all matters. Now, in delving into the American negotiation style, it's crucial to acknowledge the diversity of business cultures and styles within the United States, arguably more varied than anywhere else in the world. Preparing for specific business interactions can be challenging due to the wide spectrum of heterogeneous cultural influences. Despite this diversity, Americans generally demonstrate tolerance for unconventional negotiation styles and habits as long as they align with their values. However, it's worth noting that some may hold a strong belief in the superiority of their culture and value system, which outsiders may interpret as arrogance. This conviction often translates into an expectation that everyone adheres to a common set of ground rules. Despite these general cultural tendencies, variations in business practices may occur. Now, about their negotiation styles. Americans primarily adopt a competitive approach, occasionally intense. While seeking win-win solutions, there is often an inclination to win more than the opposing party. Power factors such as company size and financial strength play a pivotal role and are frequently emphasized. In the negotiation room, Americans may come across as fiercely competitive or even combative. However, beneath this exterior lies an ultimate interest in finding mutually acceptable solutions. Maintaining a calm, firm and persistent manner is advised coupled with a positive and constructive attitude, all while avoiding taking things personally. Notably, negotiations in the US tend to be swift, reflecting the shared cultural beliefs that speed matters and time is money. The emphasis is on execution, often prioritized over extensive planning and analysis. Moreover, counterparts typically aim to conclude negotiations and initiate actions quickly. Follow-up discussions, even for complex negotiations, are frequently conducted via phone and email, minimizing the need for multiple in-person meetings. 
turning to negotiation strategies, while most Americans are comfortable with bargaining, the practice of angling is less common. Negotiators can be ambitious, tough and aggressive, often vying for the most advantaged terms. Appearing confident and assertive is crucial, as negotiating with an apparently insecure counterpart may prompt Americans to adopt a more challenging stance. Clearly articulating your position and advocating for it when necessary is advisable, with the added benefit of emphasizing the unique value you bring to the table. Moving into the realm of business etiquette, negotiators in the US commonly establish firm positions on the onset of negotiations. Neat and clean attire is essential, though dress codes may be somewhat more casual, particularly on the West Coast. Business lunches are more prevalent than dinners providing an informal setting for discussing business matters. Now on to the French negotiation style. While navigating business in France, demonstrating respect for the country's history and significance is very important. The French attitude at times may appear to some as arrogant or egoistical, but any sign of disrespect or refusal to acknowledge France as a great and important nation can significantly impact your business relationship. Now we go into negotiation approaches in France. The primary method involves engaging in a debate aimed at reaching a mutually agreeable solution. While the buyer often holds a superior position, both sides bear the responsibility to reach an agreement, emphasizing near-term and long-term benefits. The primary negotiation style is cooperative, yet people may be hesitant to a compromise unless it becomes the only option to prevent a stalemate. Additionally, negotiators in France can be passionate and may appear outright aggressive. The French may not always adopt a win-win attitude, especially if they believe logical reasons support their position. Although exchanges of facts and arguments can be fervent, it's crucial to avoid open confrontation and maintain a demeanor of calmness, composure, patience and persistence. Next, the pace of negotiations. Anticipate a deliberate and slow process. While the French might not invest extensive time in preparing for negotiations, the bargaining and decision-making stages can be prolonged. Proposals may undergo meticulous analysis and scrutiny repeatedly. Patience is key, requiring emotional control to navigate the inevitable delays. Moving on to the bargaining phase, most French individuals are not enthusiastic about bargaining and strongly dislike haggling. Despite this, the bargaining stage can consume substantial time, with discussions revolving around proposals and debates on the merits of specific terms and conditions. Notably, prices seldom move by more than 25-30% to 30 between initial offers and the final agreement. Previously, the leading state of the USSR, Russia became a separate country in 1991. Most business people and officials in the country have limited experience with other cultures, mainly with neighboring countries. There is still a widespread lack of knowledge about the free market. It may be necessary to discuss and seek agreement on the definition of concepts such as fair plays, goodwill, profit and loss, turnover, individual accountability, proprietary rights, and so forth. Even when you do, people often expect things to be done their way. Most Russians take great pride in their country. It would be a serious mistake to belittle its accomplishments or refer to it as a loser of the Cold War. In Russia, the primary approach to negotiating involves distributive and contingency bargaining. The buyer is often in a strongly favorable position and may try to push the responsibility to reach an agreement onto the seller. Given the country's relatively unstable politi political and economic situation, negotiators may focus mostly on the near-term benefits of the business deal. The primary negotiation style in the country is very competitive and people may become outright adversarial. Most Russians view negotiating as a zero-sum game, where one side's gain equals to the other side's loss. Negotiations may become more personable and somewhat more cooperative if strong relationships have been established between the parties. While quite a few Russians are highly skilled negotiators, the majority of business people in the country have limited experience in the field. They may expect some bargaining and occasionally haggling, but this is rare. However, Russians are not easy prey. They can be extremely patient, persistent and stubborn negotiators. Obtaining concessions from them can be very difficult, as they often view compromise as a sign of weakness. 
They may frequently refuse to change their position unless the other side offers sufficient concessions or shows exceptional firmness. Similarly, they may make minor concessions while asking for major ones in return. Negotiating with Russians inevitably includes much posturing and maneuvering. The best approach is to be polite but remain tough throughout the bargaining process. Conservative attire is important when doing business here. Male business visitors should wear suits on most occasions. While you do not want to appear overdressed, make sure your shoes and your suit are in good condition. Moving on, in India the primary approach to negotiating involves distributive and contingency bargaining. While the buyer typically holds a superior position, both sides in a business deal share the responsibility to reach an agreement. Indians value long-term commitments from their business partners, emphasizing the importance of long-term benefits. Although the primary negotiation style has a competitive element, Indians prioritize building long-term relationships and seek win-win solutions. Occasionally, they may appear to lean towards a win-lose approach, and in such cases, it's beneficial to guide them towards a mutual benefit perspective. However, it's crucial to avoid being confrontational. Transitioning to the pace of negotiations, expect them to be slow and protracted in India. Delays are often inevitable, especially when dealing with government bureaucracy. Be prepared for the possibility of making several trips to achieve your objectives. Throughout the negotiation process, maintain patience, control your emotions and acknowledge that delays are part of the process. Indians perceive impatience and pushiness as rude emphasizing the importance of maintaining a respectful and considerate demeanor. Building on the insight shared in the webinar, the first key takeaway emphasizes the significant influence of culture on negotiations. The webinar underscores the negotiations extend beyond individual strategies as they are profoundly shaped by cultural differences. Recognizing these cultural nuances is paramount as challenges may arise from differing perspectives. This insight serves as a reminder of the utmost importance of understanding and respecting various cultures and international negotiations. The webinar delves into negotiation styles across different cultures covering Eastern approaches, Chinese and Japanese, Western practices, American, French and Russian, and the unique style in India. These diverse examples underline the need for flexibility in negotiation approaches. Understanding these negotiation dynamics when dealing with individuals from different cultural backgrounds is crucial. This comprehensive overview acts as a valuable guide, urging negotiators to tailor their approaches based on the specific characteristics of each culture. Then, of course, we need to tailor our approaches to specific cultures. In China, negotiations necessitate an acknowledgement of historical perspectives, the establishment of strong relationships through business meals, and an understanding of the preference for distributive and contingency bargaining. In Japan, negotiations are viewed as joint problem solving, with a dominant role for the buyer and a focus on long-term commitment. Flexibility and creativity are deemed essential for achieving successful outcomes. We also diverse negotiation styles in the West. American negotiation styles exhibit diversity due to cultural variations, generally favoring a competitive approach with an emphasis on efficiency, speed, and a focus on winning more. French negotiations involve passionate debates, cooperative approaches and meticulous consideration of short-term and long-term benefits. Negotiations in France are deliberate, slow and may involve extensive analysis. Russian negotiations are competitive, centered on near-term benefits and may take on an adversarial tone. Russians value patience and persistence and may perceive compromise as a sign of weakness. Indian negotiations, characterized by distributive and contingency bargaining, prioritize long-term commitments and relationships. Negotiations in India unfold slowly, patience, especially when navigating bureaucratic processes. Check out our negotiation course for procurement professionals. It's an easy way to learn all about getting the most from negotiations and closing better deals. Just sign up, finish the course and you'll receive a certificate at the end. This course is all online and lets you learn at your own pace. We have included easy tools and negotiation templates with practical insight. Plus, there's extra reading and bonus materials to make it even more interesting. For any inquiries, feel free to reach out to me at philippe at procurementtactics.com. Are you looking to enhance the skills of your procurement team? Look no further than Procurement Tactics. Here's what we have to offer. 
a range of online courses covering 10 different subjects, designed to upskill teams globally. Visit our website to access and download all the course syllabi. Now on to the Q&A session. This is your chance to dive deeper into the topic we have discussed today and get the answers that you have on your mind. Let us know in the comment section here on LinkedIn and we will be answering them right now. Thank you all for your attendance, it was a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you again at our next webinar next week. Enjoy the rest of your day!